I suppose it's not a big surprise that Molly Ringwald does not sit around watching old Molly Ringwald films. You know, she's seen them. She needs a big reason to go back to them. And recently, her daughter gave her a reason. Her daughter Matilda is 10, and Matilda wanted to see The Breakfast Club. Of course, 10 is a little young to see The Breakfast Club, but most of her friends had seen it. So it was kind of weird that she was the only one that hadn't seen this movie. And uh, she said that it was a conversation at slumber parties where that's a movie that some kids want to watch. And that she had always said, please, like, I don't want to watch it. Can we watch something else? Because she wanted to watch it with me, which I thought mm. was really nice. I wonder if it's if it's like she wants to watch it with you. Like, that's a nice thing to say to your mom. <laughs> <laughs> but but the the truth could also be she just doesn't want to watch it with them. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. like can you imagine like watching your mom with a group of your friends? Yeah. Like you and you have no idea what's about to happen. Yeah, I didn't even really think about that, but yeah, I'm sure that had something to do with it. M- Matilda does not like surprises. And the fact is Molly Ringwald preferred to watch it with Matilda. It just seemed like it might be a nice experience to share together. And there were things in the film that she knew that she was going to want to talk to Matilda about. Like, for instance, there's a scene where she smokes pot in the film as a teenager. So Molly showed her The Breakfast Club, not sure at all how she was going to react, not sure what it would be like to see the film through Matilda's eyes. We sent her a tape recorder to record what happened. Hello. Which, by the way, Matilda loved the tape recorder. Hello. So She loved talking into the tape recorder. She loved answering questions, though she is not going to hear this radio story for a long time. That's the plan. The Breakfast Club, if you've never seen it, is five kids. They're stuck together in school on a Saturday for all-day detention. They're kids who never would normally talk to each other in school. It's a jock, a brain, a tough kid, a popular girl, and an outsider girl. And, you know, it's a John Hughes movie. They bond talking about all these things that everybody feels in high school. And you can totally see why it still gets to kids and why it's the John Hughes film that Molly Ringwald looks back on as her favorite. So she and Matilda, they make popcorn. They futz around with the TV. And, you know, stars are just like (laughs) us. They do not know how to operate their video systems either. They cannot figure out how to turn it on. And is it DVD or HDMI? HDM1? HDMI. I I mean, it it sounds really silly. I mean, it's 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 like, it was almost like a date, you know? Like, where you just, you just want everything to go okay. Yeah. You know, I didn't want her to, I didn't want her to not like it. You know, I I didn't want her to okay. get bored. It's okay, fun. wait. Okay, okay. It's fun to talk <gasps> to. Ah, you! Oh my God, it's you! <laughs> Was there any point during the film where you had second okay, thoughts about about, about watching press it with play. her? You press the the sex stuff. I was I was a little um, I was I cringing you, a little bit. Oh, are you medically frigid or is it psychological? I didn't mean it that way. You guys are putting words into my mouth. Well, you, you know, there's a whole the part where everyone's saying, did you do it? Did you do it? Why don't you just answer the question? Be honest. No big deal. Yeah, answer it. Just answer the question, Claire. Talk to us. Come on, answer, answer the question. Come on. So then I'm thinking, she's going to ask me, what are they talking about? But then she just didn't ask. It was She was not all of that stuff. She just didn't want to know. And so I was trying to sort of ask her what she got out of that, what, she thought we were talking about, but trying to ask her in such a way where I wouldn't tell her, where I wouldn't end up talking about sex if she didn't know. So all all the talk about, like, did she do it? Did she not do it? All of that stuff kind of. What? The, the what? The what part? Well, and they were like, did, did you do it? Did you do it? Claire, just answer the question. Oh, answer yeah, the question. Wait, which part? There were what? And my husband's sitting there looking at me, just stop, stop. She doesn't get it. So this is the first time that you saw the film as a parent. Mm-hmm. Did you see it differently? Absolutely. I I really did. I like I really kind of felt for the parents. For people who haven't seen The Breakfast Club, a lot of it is about the kids being disappointed in the parents. Yeah. And how alone and isolated and frustrated you feel with your parents. And now I see the movie and I just, I think, oh, they're poor parents. 
and I, and I think that when it was pointed out to me that the, <laughs> that the movie just talks about how all parents suck, you know, um, then I thought in my mind, well, actually, that that might be kind of good because then she can see that that she doesn't have parents like that, and then she can, you know, appreciate us. <laughs> and uh, you know, but that can go another way. Yeah, that was my focus, I guess. Okay, so afterwards, you're talking to her about the film, and there's this moment that gets surprisingly emotional. And uh, let me play you that. Which character, when when the characters talk and you think like, oh, that's what I feel like, are there any that you say like, yeah, that's like what I feel like? Just a little bit of like, is he like Brian or something? Yeah. Yeah. Brian, I should say, is the straight-A student whose parents pressure him to get good grades, played by Anthony Michael Hall. You kind of feel like Brian? You do. Kinda. He's really sweet, isn't he? I know, but you kind of, like, sometimes pressure me in school. <laughs> Wait, you think I, I pressure no, you? Ba- barely, like... Wow, really? No! <laughs> not anymore! No! Take wait, 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 no, 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 tell me. Tell me. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, no, it's okay. No, no, no. Sweetie. Hey, it's okay. Okay. It's okay. Okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm just surprised. <laughs> but I told you barely. Like, just, just barely, like a little bit. Yeah. Okay, well, you know what? That's really good for me to know. I had no idea. Like, when did I make you feel like that? Well, you kept on saying, like, I wish I did better in school. Oh, because I, I said that I wish I did better in yeah, school? Yeah, so, so... and, like, you wanted me to do good. Oh, I'm sorry I made you feel that way. But you don't anymore. Do you remember the thing she's talking about, of you saying to her, like, oh, I wish that I had done better in school? <sighs> I was really surprised. I was not expecting that at all. Um, And the only thing that I can think of, really, is we have this homework battle. And it's incredibly frustrating. And (laughs) It's frustrating to get her to do the work. It's Yeah, because it's really easy. I mean, and I'm not just saying that, you know, as an adult. I mean, it's easy. She it's could, easy work for her. It's easy work for her. If she would just sit down, do it, it would it would take 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, but she resents the fact that she has to do it so much. And it, it became such a battle that she would sort of lie sprawled out, you know, kind of barely write. You couldn't even read her writing. And I would just get so frustrated with her. And, you know, and I would yell at her and say, you know, you can do better than this. You're smarter than this. You know, all the things that parents say. And I think it it um, it must have affected her. And then she said, well, you, you know, you don't do it anymore. You know, and the reason why I don't do it anymore is because I don't do her homework with her anymore. Because I can't. I find it too frustrating. Oh, when she said that, I thought like, oh, is she just being protective of you? You know, I think she was being protective of me, too. I think the thing that I noticed the most was Matilda kind of wanting to um, make me feel okay. She really did not want to hurt my feelings or make me upset. And she wants to please me, too. I can hear that when I... (sighs) Yeah. Well, the fact that the next thing that happens, she instantly goes to... I have better parents than they do. I know, like it's scripted. I know. So is there anything else that you got out of the movie that you... Um, I have better... Well, I have better parents than (laughs) that. You're just just saying that to make me feel better. Come on. I mean, it was bizarre how she just said the thing that I hoped she would get out of it. She knows. I mean, she could intuit that. She knew that, it, that, that I was hoping for that. Yeah, she was like giving me a little present wrapped in a bow. But at a moment where it doesn't feel like that at all. No. No, not at all. The whole thing left her wondering a lot about what 
happened when Matilda cried and how she handled it and should she have let Matilda talk for longer and should she have asked her more questions or different questions. You know, you just can never know what things that you say to your kids are going to stay with them and, you know, just little things said in a passing moment that are going to bounce around in their heads and lead them to conclusions that you don't intend or expect in any way. Yeah. I think there's always moments where you you perceive things differently. I, I know it with my own mom and dad. I mean, you know, there there are times where I'll tell a story that I've heard a million times over the years, you know, and, and my mom will just completely switch it up or she'll, <laughs> she'll see it completely differently. Like and, some story from your childhood, like you're telling this story about like something they did or yeah. How, yeah, and they're just like, no, no, no. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there, there's one, you know, <laughs> I, I come from a family where my sister was sort of designated as the great beauty in the family. And this was just like known. My sister, I was the talented one. My brother was the smart one. And my sister was the beautiful one. And, uh, and I remember actually asking my mom at, you know, I must have been around Matilda's age, you know, if she thought that I was pretty. And she said, you're cute. And, Ooh. yeah, and that is really not what you want to hear when you're <laughs> 10 years. I mean, now it's okay. I would, I, I would be okay with you. But, you know, when, when you're 10, it was just devastating. And, um, and she completely denies that now. And, I mean, something that would have such a, an impact on me. I mean, I just, I wasn't making it up. It, it really affected me. Um, and she just says it didn't happen. She says, I, oh, I always knew that you were beautiful. Um, you know, ask your father. And obviously, like, if she had any idea how it would bounce around in your head, she would have never said it, too. She didn't think, like, oh, that's going to stick. <laughs> no, I, I don't think that she did. I have a friend. Um, her mom would tell her and her sister, uh, no, you girls are average. Oh, <laughs> no, no, like you, you guys, are, you girls are average, average, you know, like, you, you know, you're smart, but you're average smart. And I was like, wow, you were not raised by Jews, man. <laughs> <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> that what? is not the message you get. I mean, in my experience, there's a lot of like, you're so special. You're the most special. You're so yeah. special. You know, like the boys and the girls. Yeah. You know, like, like she's the most talented. Well, I was always told that I was special. I mean, there there was no question that I was special and that I was destined for uh, for greatness. As a little kid? As a little kid. Wow. From the time that I was, you know, really little. I mean, to the point where... <laughs> this is kind of heavy, but I'll tell you. Anyway, um, my first brother died. Um, he was, he was oh. the first and I was the last, so we, we never met, but... Um, my mom was, you know, understandably just devastated by this and um, was sort of suicidal for a while. I mean, didn't actually try anything, but she was considering. Um, and then was, um, <laughs> this makes her sound so hippy dippy, and she's not at all, but she believes that she um, conversed with a spirit. And, um, and what they said, basically, and, and, and this is a story that I've heard since I was very small, that she was here for another reason, for, for someone else. Um, and as soon as I was born, she knew that it was me. That's a lot to put on you. Yeah, it's heavy. <laughs> it's really... Like she told you that when you were a little girl, yeah. like that she was put on this earth yeah because of you she believed that 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 was why yeah i mean because she she knew that there was there was some reason why she was supposed to stick around and 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 stay alive yeah. and it was to have this little girl who, who was, was you yeah who is such a special gift yeah. to the world yeah so how strange that you would end up famous by the age of 15 or something well i kind of had to i mean i kept my mom alive and so then when you actually did become a movie star as a teenager, did she take that as proof? Like, oh, see, that was all true. Yeah. And did you at the time? Like, did the whole story fit together for you too? Yeah. I, 
had to succeed. I had to be great. What a lot of pressure on you. I know. And then what do I do? I turn around and I pressure my daughter because I think she's so great. I know. Yeah. 